Hi, welcome to Bible Scribe. I'm going to be talking today about the prophecy in Isaiah about the virgin birth. There's actually quite a bit of controversy about this prophecy uh, in technical circles, and so I wanted to go through the arguments about it and talk through that, give you a little insight. So we're going to start here by reading in Isaiah chapter 7. That's where this prophecy is, and it's verse 14. So let me go down there. We're just going to read through that. <clears throat> here we go. So verse 14 here. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right, so that's the gist of it. Uh, there's other things here, but we're going to focus right on that verse there. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. And most of the controversy surrounds this word virgin, obviously. Um, so the main controversy, and I will admit most of the controversy comes from Jewish scholars who, of course, they didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah. So they tend to like to find points in the Old Testament that Christians consider the prophecies of Jesus Christ, and then they want to kind of deconstruct them so that they can say, well, that didn't point to Jesus. So <clears throat> this is one of those spots. And the main reason that that discussion even happens is because of this word virgin. So in uh, different texts, uh, specifically Greek texts versus Hebrew texts, the word is a little different. And so uh, we're going to look at that. The main argument the Jews and some other scholars give is that this word in the Hebrew was not the word that Hebrews used for virgin, that it was instead a word that means young maiden. Um, and so there's the two words in Hebrew are Betula and Alma. Betula meaning actually virgin specifically, and the word Alma meaning uh, young maiden. Not necessarily meaning virgin, but you know, not it's just not specific. It's more just a young maiden who's not married, a young unmarried lady. And so uh, in this way the the argument goes that because this does not refer specifically to a virgin giving birth to a son, that it's it's not that Jesus is not the fulfillment of that prophecy. And of course, it's a, um, something the Jews like to bring up a lot because, again, they don't believe Jesus was the Messiah. They don't want to believe Jesus was the Messiah. So they'll try to point to this and say, Jesus wasn't the Messiah. See, it's not talking about a virgin. <clears throat> so it couldn't be Mary. All right, so <clears throat> let's look real quickly. I have pulled up different, some notes and these are different, uh, the translations of different writings of the Old Testament. And so, for instance, here we have the Hebrew Masoretic text of Isaiah 17. The Masoretic text was, is the, as of AD 600, the agreed upon Hebrew translation of the Old Testament. The Masoretes were a group of Jews that got together and <clears throat> I think it was 600, it could have been 300 AD but it was hundreds of years after Christ. They came together, these Masoretes, and decided, agreed upon version of the Old Testament text. And uh, so that's where most of our Bibles get the Old Testament text that they use. And so this is what that is. And so in the Masoretic text of Isaiah 7:14, the most widely accepted Hebrew translation, the the word used for virgin in that space in that that context is actually the word alma which is young maiden it's not it's not necessarily a virgin so that's what the masoretic says when we found the dead sea scrolls in <clears throat> the caves in qumran and these dead sea scrolls dated to way before the time of christ uh, and one of the scrolls in there was the scroll of Isaiah, the Isaiah scroll, uh, that scroll confirmed and matched our Mas the Masoretic text very closely. And in fact, in this passage, it also 
uses the word Alma, which is young maiden, not Betula, which was specifically a virgin only. Um, this is a young maiden. And so the Dead Sea Scrolls did confirm in this passage that the Masoretic text was very accurate, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls being from almost 600 years BC. So <clears throat> very old, uh, a very good confirmation that it has not changed much in that time frame and that our current version is very accurate. So the Dead Sea Scrolls, another testament to the, that word is young maiden. The Aramaic Targum of Isaiah 7.14, now this is Jewish writings about the, uh, the scriptures. I believe they're, they're rabbinical commentaries uh, of the scriptures. And again, they use young maiden. And so those are old writings, uh, you know, probably to the first few centuries A.D., and so they again use the words young young maiden of course Jewish texts however um, consistent with the Masoretic now we have a Syriac Peshitta of the first century time frame so this is the time of Christ this version was put together of the scriptures and it actually does render the word as the virgin word Betula <clears throat> so there's one testament to Bethula. Of course, it is a, uh, a a version of the scriptures that was modern to Jesus' time. Okay. And then we have the Latin Vulgate. It also renders virgin. Of course, the Vulgate came uh, as was written and put together long after the time of Christ, but it does give testament to uh, using the word virgin there. The Greek Septuagint of the time of Christ. Now this is the version that was in use, in common use at the time of Christ in the first century. And it was also the version that was referred to by Christ and the disciples uh, when they quoted scripture, they quoted this version. Uh, so there's some authority there, right? Uh, and so this version does render the word to virgin. Uh, it uses the Greek equivalent of virgin. And so, <clears throat> you know, that is a, a good marker or indicator that those at the time of Christ, including Christ himself and the disciples, would have assumed that this prophecy meant a virgin. However, you know, we do see that in the older Hebrew texts, it's not specifically virgin, it's young maiden. So, but this, uh, the Septuagint version does have the word virgin. And then we have, uh, we have other, I'm not going to go into all these because we'll just keep going, but you've seen how it kind of is. Here's another Greek version. Uh, this one uses the word young maiden. Okay, so there's, it's back and forth, back and forth. And uh, so... We're not going to go any further on versions, but that shows you that why this controversy arises and how it al allows a little play and ambiguity, okay? Now, so my conclusion is that the oldest texts, the Hebrew texts, from which that prophecy is derived, obviously, is, is saying the word young maiden. It's not saying virgin specifically. Uh, and that might seem like a problem at first to some people. Um, however, I don't think it's a problem, actually, because there are some logical issues with arguing that Jesus was not the fulfillment of that prophecy because it did not state virgin specifically. And I want to go into those, those issues. Um, <clears throat> and I wrote it right up here in the top of my notes. But the first problem with this is for those who are trying to argue this argument because they don't want to see Jesus as the fulfillment. Well, the problem is that even if you just translate that word young maiden, Mary still is fulfillment of that. She still was a young maiden. She was in her teens at the time that uh, she was betrothed to, uh, to Joseph. However, they were not yet married. So she fulfilled that translation perfectly, either the translation of virgin or young maiden. Both she was an exact fulfillment of. So saying that that's some sort of argument that Mary and Jesus were not a fulfillment of this prophecy doesn't hold water. Logical fallacy. It just doesn't hold water. So 
there's that. And then the number two thing about this was that if you're trying to argue she was not the mother of the Messiah because she was a virgin, and because this prophecy does not use the word virgin, it couldn't be her, well, by doing so, you are backing yourself into a corner by admitting that Jesus was born of a virgin, a legitimate virgin. And that that would essentially make his birth the most miraculous birth that's ever been recorded in known history. So if Jews are trying to argue that, that Mary could not be the fulfillment of this prophecy because she was a virgin, they are backhandedly admitting that she was miraculous and that Jesus' birth was the most miraculous thing that had ever occurred on earth. And so I just find it funny that this, this debate even exists because it really matters not either way as far as Jesus' fulfillment and Mary's fulfillment of this prophecy in Isaiah. Jesus was the fulfillment of this prophecy. Mary was a virgin when she gave birth to him. And Isaiah's prophecy was absolutely correct in every way. So this debate, this argument about Isaiah 7.14 and whether it meant virgin or young maiden is really ir irrelevant to Jesus Christ, to Mary, to uh, the interpretation of that prophecy. Uh, it's just an argument that seems to come up with people that don't want to allow for connecting this prophecy to Jesus in the New Testament. And so uh, I think that's a good treatment on that. I, I just, there's no question in my mind, Jesus was the absolute fulfillment of this prophecy. It's just the people that don't want to admit it that will keep arguing this, this um, argument that doesn't actually prove their point either way. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you uh, do continue to enjoy my, my videos, like, subscribe, uh, do the little alert. And uh, that'll just help me, um, as far as popularity, get these videos out, uh, get more people seeing these things and understanding more about the Bible. So I appreciate your time, and God bless.